Hey <coughs> Woo! Hey y'all, it's Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking all about the process of save the dates. How to put them together, what you need for them, what I would have done differently, and things I didn't even consider before. Also, side note, I'm trying to switch up where I'm filming in my new apartment. I still don't know what is the best place to film. If you see me bopping around in these next few videos, that's why. I talked a little bit about save the dates in my what to do right after you get engaged video, but now that I've gone through the entire process, I wanna walk through with y'all some of the big things that I learned. Once you've booked your venue and made your guest list, you know exactly who's going to receive these save the dates. The first thing that I would suggest is figuring out if you want to do a save the date with a picture of you and your fiance on it or one without a picture. If you want to do a picture, a lot of people will schedule like a professional photographer and have an engagement photo shoot. So if that's something that you're interested in, you need to book that ASAP. Photographers can be booked out for quite a while. So if you want to go that route, make sure that that's the first thing you do. Honestly, I just had my mom take a picture of us in like a local park by our house. I really liked how that picture turned out and just wanted to get our save the dates out ASAP, especially because we were going to have a lot of people from out of town coming in. Trying to plan and coordinate a professional shoot during COVID while we're moving was just not in the cards for us. I really liked our picture and thought it was very representative of us, but just taking a good picture isn't all you have to think about. So if you are doing a save the date with your photo on it, make sure that you print it from a very good photo printing place. So what do I mean by that? We originally got our save the dates done from a normal printing place. And once they were printed, the colors on the photo were so terrible. I felt so bad, but we just could not send out the photos. The color was just off. I don't even know what to say, but it was so unfortunate that all of those had to go to waste. Also, they were a lot thinner than we were expecting. It was literally just like a piece of printer paper, basically. And we wanted something that had some weight to it, a little bit thicker. Unfortunately, we learned the hard way that you need to do a lot of research in order to know what size paper you need and also how your picture will print on the material. Josh actually recommended that we do a test round and my mom and I were just like, there's no time to do a test round. Like we need to get these out. We need to get them printed. So honestly, good for him. Going forward, I would definitely recommend doing a little test run if you can, just to see how it will look when you physically print it. Because once you print out 100, 200, 300 invitations, there is no going back, especially if you do it from a professional printing service. A lot of times the sites will get you saying they have a sale, like you need to order them now, this will be the best deal, but there are always those sales, you don't need to worry about it. There will be coupons and plenty of discount codes in order to continue to get a good price. If you know someone who has printed with whatever service you're using before and it's reputable, you're probably fine, but if you're taking a chance or if you think that your photos may not come out well, I would try to do a test run. But something that I actually learned through this process is you don't have to put pictures on your save the date. Obviously, Katie. But I feel like all of my friends were putting pictures on theirs and I thought that that was like the standard that I had to uphold. Just take a second to research all the different save the date options. You don't have to do anything traditional. If you want to do something more casual or maybe something that's not a traditional save the date on a piece of paper that you send out to everyone, go ahead and explore it. Research all your options before coming to a decision. You don't have to spend so much time on it, but definitely take a breath, just peruse a little bit on the internet and see what people are doing and see what speaks most to you. Printing photos can be expensive, so it's totally understandable if you don't wanna do that. I've also seen people do really cute cartoon caricatures of themselves or even their venue or some pretty piece of artwork on a save the date that could also be really nice option. A lot more work goes into it if you are getting your picture done because you have to do your hair and your makeup and probably get a new outfit, which honestly is a lot of work for something that, no offense, but people are probably just gonna stick on their fridge for a little bit and then throw away later. I really like how ours turned out, but honestly, thinking back, I also would have been okay with doing something a little simpler. So what do you need to put on your save the date? Bare minimum, you need to put y'all's names, the date, and the area that y'all are getting married. How you phrase everything else is completely up to you. Some people will put stuff like formal invitation to follow or contact number, but really, as long as they have those bare minimum things, that's basically all this 
save the date is. It's just to put that in people's calendars to know if they'll be attending your wedding, they will need to be in that location on that date. More concrete details like ceremony, the actual venue, and all of that will actually be on the physical wedding invitation. So you don't need to do all of that at this point. Also, if you have a wedding website, I would highly suggest putting that on your save the date. That's also where a lot of people can get that good information if they're trying to plan ahead, which means if you have a wedding website and you want to put it on your save the date, you need to finish your wedding website before you send them out. Make sure that you account for some time to sit down and build it out. A lot of the ones these days are just pre-made templates, so it really wouldn't take that much time. It just depends on how much you want to go all out on your website, what you want to put on there. They're definitely a good option if you want to have a place for people to be able to return to find information like venue, where to stay, where to RSVP, but you can also get by without one. If you want to include some of those preliminary details in your save the date, you can also just include a little piece of paper that has some of those details. Which brings me to my next suggestion. If you will be having out of town guests, I would highly suggest planning room blocks at nearby hotels close to your venue and include that information somewhere in your save the date or somehow communicate this information with those out of town guests who will be needing it. People don't have to stay at the room blocks, but it's nice to have that option to know where a bunch of people are staying, any preferred hotels in the area, who you can plan carpools with. Plus you can usually get some good room rates by booking them all together. In order for out of town guests to have enough time to book flights and hotels, I would highly suggest sending out your save the dates around eight to 10 months before your wedding. I've seen a lot of websites say around six to eight months because they don't want you to send them too far out in advance. But I know that myself and a lot of my friends and family are big planners. So I'd rather just give people a little more notice in order to get good deals on travel, flights, hotels, all that good stuff. So the next thing you need to do is to start gathering everyone's addresses and put them in a nice neat format that will help you print them out easily. This is another instance that I've seen where a wedding website can be really helpful. If you have people's phone numbers, you can set it up where it will text them requesting this information and then it puts all of it in a nice spreadsheet for you. But honestly, you could also do that yourself if you think this is a fun time for you to reach out to your friends and family and gather those addresses. And then you can set it up in a way that makes the most sense for you in order to have that info. You could also set up an online survey. Like there are so many different ways that you can gather this information. So just do whatever makes the most sense for you. And it's easiest for you to just keep yourself organized because there are already so many other things going on that you're probably thinking about. If you're actually doing the printing of the addresses on envelopes yourself, make sure you do a few test runs with different fonts and positioning to make sure everything is lined up correctly. You also could handwrite them if you have really good handwriting. I honestly wish I would have done this for my save the dates. It would have taken way too much time. And again, moving and all of that going on, there just wasn't enough time for me to physically handwrite them. But I think it could be a fun little personal touch. So maybe I'll do that for my invitation. But I also don't want to commit to that. So we'll see. Also a fun little time saver is if you get a return stamp for your envelopes, you can just stamp it and that way you don't have to physically write it every time. But if you're printing all your envelopes, then that really won't save you any time, but it could make it look cute. When you're actually addressing people on the envelopes, you can be more informal than you would for a typical wedding invitation. Honestly, you can address people however you want, but that's just kind of the rule of thumb that I've seen. So sometimes people will be addressed as Mr. and Mrs. last name, but I wanted to make sure that everyone's first and last names were included on each envelope. So because I included the ladies' names, it seems a little more informal, but honestly, I feel like it's fine and you can do whatever you want. Also with packaging, and sending all of these out, make sure that you have enough stamps. I think one stamp can hold a certain amount of weight. So if you're just doing a card in an envelope, you should be fine. But if you're putting a bunch of different things in the envelope, make sure that you go and get it weighed to know how much you need to pay for postage. Also, I didn't really know that there were different types of stamps. I've only really just seen like the American flag ones or maybe some Christmas ones. But my mom was asking me if I wanted to get wedding stamps, which didn't know they were a thing. And we ended up not having enough time to order them, but they're just just stamps like it's fine nobody's really gonna notice in the long run but if that's important to you make sure that you budget enough time in order to special order those stamps and last but not least don't stress about the design or how it will affect your theme a lot of times you'll be doing your save the date at the very early beginning stages of your wedding planning process so you may not even have a concrete idea of what you want your wedding to look like or feel like it doesn't have to match perfectly just 
kind of experiment and do whatever you want. People will be excited about it no matter what they get. This is just supposed to represent you are someone that I want at my wedding and just want you to put that date on your calendar so you don't forget it. Also try not to put too much focus into your stationery and try to put more of that time and effort and money into your actual event because that's what people are looking forward to. Like yeah, having a nice save the day or invitation is really nice and beautiful, but people are there for the experience and they're excited for your actual wedding day and to see y'all get married. So those are my tips on that navigating the save the date process. Let me know if y'all have any more questions on save the dates or just the wedding planning process in general. If y'all found this video helpful, please feel free to give it a like and subscribe to support my channel. Thank y'all so much for watching to the end of this video and see y'all soon. Bye.